Hello, friends and colleagues. It's Jim Wolf, and I'm happy to be bringing you on this stormy Wednesday morning uh, our final CAMCAST on monitoring and evaluation. It's what we might call the Turkey Day CAMCAST, and I can think of a lot of good reasons why you will enjoy having this CAMCAST available to you while you're uh, spending the holiday with family. For those of you who have crazy ants like I do, having uh, a CAMCAST on your iPhone with earbuds could be a useful thing. You could just tell them that you have work to do and you need to take some time to learn about monitoring and evaluation. In any case, I'm here in my office. It's quiet. There's nobody around. And I'm going to take this opportunity to share some of my thoughts on monitoring and evaluation with you. Let's start off by asking a simple question. Why monitor and evaluate? The reasons are numerous, and they are all critically important. We monitor and evaluate to learn what works and what does not, to make informed decisions regarding program operations and service delivery based on objective data. We monitor and evaluate to ensure effective and efficient use of resources, to keep our programs on track, to assess the extent to which a program is having its dire, desired impact to create transparency and foster public trust, to understand and support and meet donor needs, and to create institutional memory. We use several different synonyms for the word monitoring. In evaluation speak, we refer to monitoring as formative evaluation. Sometimes we call it process evaluation because monitoring focuses on the implementation process and asks the key question, how well is our program being implemented? Monitoring is an ongoing, continuous process. It requires the collection of data at multiple points throughout the program cycle including at the beginning to provide a baseline. It can be used to determine if activities need adjustment while the program is taking place to improve outcomes and to track changes in program performance over time. Monitoring provides information for stakeholders to make informed decisions regarding the effectiveness of programs and the efficient use of program resources. Here's a list of program elements that are commonly monitored. Supply inventories, the number of vaccine doses administered monthly, the quality of service, the coverage of services provided. It's a long list, but those are a few examples. Now let's talk a little bit about evaluation. Evaluation in M&E speak is often referred to as summative evaluation. Unlike monitoring, which occurs continuously, evaluations are less frequent, scheduled in advance, and seek to analyze the effectiveness, magnitude, and or satisfaction of short and medium term outcomes. An evaluation of a project should analyze the implementation process as well as the impact that the project has had on health status of target populations. Evaluation asks questions like, to what extent did our program activities lead to our meeting our program objectives? To what extent did our outcome can our outcomes be attributed to program objectives? 
what changes have occurred in the target population as a result of our program or project? How has our program or project or policies been conducted? What happened? What was accomplished? What was our level of effort? Operational issues are things that we have to confront when we uh, monitor and evaluate. Uh, for monitoring, we have to think about what we're going to monitor, the purpose for monitoring what we have chosen to monitor, the frequency of data collection and reporting, the source of data, and we'll also have to identify who will get and use the monitoring information. For evaluation, we'll have to decide on the scale and focus of the evaluation. We'll have to name an evaluation team and decide when the evaluations will be done. We'll have to determine who will get the evaluation findings and how much the evaluation will cost, and we'll have to budget for that. And as an aside, generally, you should figure somewhere between 5 and 7% of total project cost being spent on evaluation. Now, this is a very critical slide uh, because it uh, comes from our logic model, and it uh, explains the relationship between the logic model and the development of an M&E plan. And I'm just going to review this with you. I like this slide because it uses the logic model, which we spent a lot of time developing, to frame monitoring and evaluation questions. Uh, the diagram here separates the logic model into formative evaluation, which we've said is monitoring, and summative evaluation, which we refer to as evaluation. And for monitoring, we ask context questions, context questions about relationships and capacity. We ask questions like, what aspects of our situation most shaped our ability to do the work we set out to do in our project? We also ask implementation questions about the quality and quantity of the activities and outputs we have undertaken in our project. What did our program accomplish? For each of these monitoring questions, we then develop process indicators that are measures of whether planned activities are being carried out and how they are carried out. For the evaluation side, on the right side of this diagram, we ask questions about effectiveness, magnitude, and satisfaction. What is our assessment of what resulted from the work we did in our project? What have we learned about doing this kind of work in a community like ours? For these questions, we develop outcome indicators. Outcome indicators measure the quantity and quality of the results that we have achieved. One of the most critical steps in designing an M&E system is selecting appropriate indicators. The M&E plan should include descriptions of the indicators that will be used to monitor program implementation and evaluate achievement of the goals and objectives. As we have said, for monitoring, we generally use process indicators that are measures of whether planned activities are being carried out and how well they're being carried out. For evaluation, we use the outcome indicators that measure the quantity and quality of the results achieved. Our indicators should measure an important aspect of a program, should show whether project activities are on track with planned outputs and provide benchmarks for demonstrating the achievements of the program. A reasonable guideline is to have one or two indicators per outcome and at least one indicator 
for each output, but no more than 10 to 15 indicators for any significant program focus area. Now let's take a look at some types of indicators for each of the logic model components, starting with inputs. Here is a uh, simplified logic model. The expected impact of the program described in this logic model is to decrease the unintended and mistimed pregnancies. And working from left to right and starting in inputs, we see that uh, there are some resources that will be available to us as we start the project, both um, staff from the MOH for training and uh, materials the MOH has developed for training. We see that if we have those materials, then uh, we will be able to conduct um, family planning training workshops in all of the districts. And if we conduct those workshops, uh, we will uh, have trained uh, clinic providers in family planning sur um, service provision. And if all the clinic providers have been trained in family planning service provision, then they will have increased uh, knowledge and skills to deliver family planning services. And if they have those increased knowledge and skills, they will um, be able to provide quality counseling to every, every patient encounter. And if they provide quality counseling at every patient encounter, we will have improved access to quality family planning services. And if we have improved access to quality family planning services, we can imagine that the impact of that will eventually be a decrease in unintended and mistimed pregnancies. Now let's try to create an M&E question and an indicator for each of these logic model components. So what I'd like you to do is get out a pencil and paper or use your computer and take a look at the next slide and develop an M&E question and then an indicator for that question. I'll do the same and then we'll compare notes. So here's the question. It relates to inputs uh, and uh, the question is that you want to develop is uh, how, uh, what question do you want to ask to monitor uh, these two inputs, the MOH training staff and the MOH training materials. And once you've asked those questions, create an indicator for each that will tell you uh, whether you have um, uh, answered that uh, question when you get the data for that indicator. So, Pause the CAMCAST, write it down, and then restart the CAMCAST, and we'll talk. Great. Well, um, here was my uh, thought about this. Uh, the question I would ask about MOH training staff was, were MOH staff available to develop and lead the family planning training workshops. Um, and the indicator would be the number of hours the MOH staff participating in developing and conducting training workshops over the projected number of hours required for development and implementation of the training workshops. Um, for the second, uh, we might ask the question, were MOH training materials available to training staff? And the indicator might be MOH training manuals were provided by the MOH at training workshops. And we could have uh, the number uh, of times those materials were provided over the number of training workshops that were uh, delivered. 
So now we're going to move to the right of the logic model and look at um, asking uh, questions uh, for activities and participation, uh, both uh, components of output. So the uh, first will concentrate on the output activity, um, which is conduct a family planning training workshop workshops in all districts. So now put down your fork, push the pie away, get your computer out again, and develop a monitoring question for this output. Uh, conduct family planning training workshops in all districts. And when you've done that, uh, then do the participation question. Uh, what question would you ask to monitor whether all clinic providers trained in family planning service provision? And once you've created those questions, come up with an indicator to um, measure each. So pause the tape, answer the question, and then come back. So here are my uh, thoughts on those questions and the indicators associated with them. First, for uh, outputs activities, uh, the question I might ask would be, were training workshops conducted in all districts as planned? And the indicator might be the number of workshops conducted per district over the number of workshops planned per district. And for the participation component of output, uh, all clinic providers trained in family planning service provision, I might ask the question, did we train all providers in district clinics in family planning service provision? And uh, the indicator might be the number of providers completing training in district over the number of providers in the district. So now we've arrived at uh, outcomes, and we're going to do short, medium, and long-term outcomes. And we'll start with the short-term outcomes. Uh, our short-term outcome is increased practitioners with skills and knowledge in family planning service provision. And we're going to develop uh, an evaluation question for this outcome, and then an indicator uh, to uh, assess this question. So again, uh, take a sip of your eggnog and write down what you think, and then we'll compare. Pause the tape. Welcome back. So here, is, here are my thoughts um, for this question about uh, assessing the practitioner skills and knowledge in family planning service provision. I might ask, did practitioners' skills and knowledge about family planning increase? And my indicator uh, is percentage of providers scoring 85% on a skills checklist one month after training. So now let's talk about medium-term outcomes. Uh, in this case, the medium-term outcome is family planning counseling is provided at every patient encounter. And the question that uh, I might ask is, do patients have improved access to quality family planning service? And the indicator might be the number of patients receiving family planning counseling at clinic at each clinic visit by facility each month. Let's take a look at uh, long-term outcomes. We're looking at uh, improved uh, access to quality family planning services. A question that I might ask uh, is, are more patients receiving quality family planning services? And the indicator might be the number of patients who report that they have continuous access to their uh, contraceptive choice. And finally, um, let's talk briefly about impact indicators. 
what question would you ask here? Well, my question was, have clients reduced unintended, unintended pregnancies? And the indicator would be the number of intended or mistimed pregnancies reported by clients over the total number of clients. So we've worked through that example of using the logic model to create evaluation questions for the different components of the model. We've completed our CAMCAST, and I think we've seen how we can use our logic model to develop our evaluation plan. We've seen how we can use uh, the inputs and outputs, both activities and uh, participants, to create monitoring questions and indicators related to those questions. And we've seen how we can evaluate the uh, outcome of our project using short, medium, and long-term outcomes from our logic model. We ask uh, questions about what the program has achieved, and we can develop indicators to help us assess uh, those um, achievements. It's um, great to be sharing these thoughts with you today, and uh, I hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you next week uh, when we will uh, tackle in class um, the development of a monitoring and evaluation plan for uh, our projects. So, so long.